every now and again, the one and only Dion from Dion Talk throws out a concept that I am stumped by. That has happened today. So let me share with you what I know so far, and let's just see where this goes. Dion told me people are chasing the wrong 1%. I don't know about you, but I'm curious. All right, Dion, what is the 1% people are chasing that is actually the wrong 1%? Lay it on me. So I, I like that I, I make a casual comment on, hey, this is a video that I'm I'm putting together. And when I have the video on my channel, it'll be a little more articulate, structured, maybe not scripted, but it'll be chronologically explained better than what's going to come off the top of my head right now. Let me see if I can break your brain. So there's a couple of concepts when it comes to the 1%. First, most people, since there's 99% that aren't in the one percenters, either hate them or envious of them or want to emulate them. Right. So there's that the the Elon Musk's the the one percent. If you what is it now? It's you make over four hundred and something thousand dollars a year. You have a net worth of ten million dollars. That's the one percent we hear of. But that's looking at U.S. statistics. Oh. If you look at worldwide statistics in the top one percent, it means you make thirty seven thousand dollars a year. So if you're chasing the one percent first, which one are you looking at? But that's that's not even the one percent that I think people should be chasing. OK. This, this might be something that some people out there understand and some don't. There is a 1% when it comes to uh, motorcycle gangs. They have a, a one on their, their vest. And basically they are uh, what I would call being former law enforcement, the worst of the worst, the ones that commit the worst crimes to be in the gang. So it's not your average motorcycle gang of, of people. It's, it's actual criminals that ride motorcycles. There is a 1% in law enforcement too. And the statistics of all law enforcement groups that ever go get a matching tattoo is all of them are in prison within two years. So there are 1% groups you don't want to be in. Most people are trying to be in that 1%. They go, how do I increase my income? How do I have a net worth of a certain amount? Here's the st statistic I heard recently um, from Jospreet Singh of Minority Mindset. It was during one of, I think, his like four-month-old videos. So I went and researched this when I heard it. 1% of the population becomes financially independent. This is completely removed from net worth, certain amount of income per year. It is the amount of money it costs you to live each year is surpassed by your income that comes from sources other than you having to sell your life one hour at a time. So if people can stop thinking of the 1% as I have to make so much or I have to have so much and think, what do I need to have coming in? And how do I have my passive income higher than that? That's the 1% we should be pursuing. And for each yeah. person, that's different. That's the key in all of this. That is that is what I am really passionate about. You've heard me talk about getting wealthy is three steps. But wealthy is just, it's not a net worth. It's not an income. It's some number slightly above what your monthly nut is. What does it cost you to live your life? I do suggest you add some factor above it, 50%, 100%. But that's it. If you're a 19-year-old kid and you can live off two grand, well, then your freedom number is 3,000 bucks. Get after it, kid. You could be there in five years. If you're a high-tech worker who doesn't start till you're 30 and your spend is 20 grand a month, well, your nut's 30 grand. You're absolutely right. I am irritated by net worth conversations. It's a fake number. It fluctuates all the time. It's full of just stupid assumptions, and it means almost nothing, almost nothing. Income numbers. I have worked with people that make a million bucks a year that couldn't grab 10 grand if they had to. They're spending it all. The people that I know that are the happiest make X and live on X minus. And when you live on X minus, that is disposable income. That, frankly, you could light on fire and your life wouldn't change. Folks, that's the key to getting, getting wealthy. Step one is creating disposable income. Live below your means. Step two is becoming a lead at something. And then let time be your friend. I am so happy we're talking about this. One percent that I want my channel focused on is not net worth, is not income. It is financial freedom. It is some factor above your monthly nut. We don't talk about it enough. What is your monthly nut? Have you looked it up? Can you guess? It's it's the foundation of that $99 course, get your money right. What is your monthly nut? Needs versus wants. What is your lifestyle before, during, and after financial freedom? Let's have that exercise. 
uh, Jazz Jazz Preet Singh, nice work. I didn't know only one percent of us reach it, and you know, you and I happen to be two of those people. It's kind of funny. We're we're on this. So here's an example of of how the one percent can have can have an impact on the way you invest. Lumberjack landlord and me as a comparison. Mm-hmm. We're both financially free, right? He could have retired years ago. I, I retired last year. He is looking at it through the lens, not of he needs a certain amount of income per year or he needs a certain amount of monthly income. He is looking at it as he has currently three kids under five. He ha- has a spouse. He wants a certain lifestyle. So his passive income, his income from his investments is on a scale to support that life. I didn't start investing until I was 40. I reached financial freedom in about eight years when my kids were moving out of the house. I can't uh, imagine having a spouse, but for me, it takes my, my monthly expenses about 4,000 a month. Lumberjack landlords probably wants his to be like 20 or $30,000 a month. So I multiplied mine by four. And when my passive income passed $16,000 a month, I felt stupid going to work. I was never pursuing most of my career, I never made six figures. I think till the last two years of working, I don't think I ever made six figures. Um, so I would never be in the 1%. My net worth isn't, it's not even, yeah, it's definitely not even half of 10 minutes, but it's a little over 3 million in net worth, which is a fictitious number that I actually don't yes. care about. Yes. But I have financial freedom. That's what the percent- important number. Exactly. Yes. It's that 1% of people who can work if they want to, travel if they want to, uh, the, the the meanest meme you can ever show a kid is is when you're a kid, you're going to want to play all the video games you want to, but you don't have enough money. When you get older, you're going to have plenty of money, but no time to play those games. Well, that, that 1% of people who reach financial freedom can now do anything that they want. How many people do you know in your circle, people watching this video, that can do anything they want? That's the 1% you chase. Yeah. And that isn't being super rich. It's being wealthy. Exactly. One of the things that both you and Matt went through, uh, cause there's a, there's an exercise in my get your money right course, where you kind of talk about your current lifestyle. You talk about what you could sacrifice to kind of minimize. And then what is your, you know, your Mac daddy lifestyle. And I won't remember the numbers exactly, but the lumberjacks max daddy lifestyle was like 75 grand a month, right? He wanted multiple houses, multiple this, this, that, the others. I think your Mac daddy lifestyle was like nine grand and you like stretch for it. Right. So again, it's just, what do you want? What do you want out of life? And it's just so powerful. Uh, I wish more people understood, but it's not, it's not something we're taught. I have never had a conversation about discretionary income. We should. I, part of the get your money right course, we take a a kid's video game that costs a thousand bucks and we turn it into time because it is only your discretionary income that buys the video game. And I think one of the examples was like 83 hours. So to buy your kid this video game or video game player, it's going to take two weeks of your life. Is it really worth that? The answer is no freaking way. Yeah, there's just so much in the Get Your Money Right course, and it is just about discretionary income, understanding what wealth is. And it is being that 1%. That is the only 1% worth chasing. I have... Yeah, it's just the others are irrelevant. That's the only one that matters. So let's get after that. Dion, where can people find you? And finally, this video. Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. Thank you so much. And you did not break my brain. You got me super excited. Awesome. Thank you.